Hello Internet! Today we're going to be looking at the Ray Marching Toolkit for Unity uh, and some of the things you can do with it. So this is a this is a toolkit that was just released about a, a week ago. I've been kind of playing with it on my own time. Uh, I just taking some time to kind of rearrange things. The camera's in different places and everything. But now we're going to get a get in look at this. Uh, so this is a toolkit that gives you Ray Marching in Unity and it's really easy to use actually which is Good because ray marching can get a little bit complicated if you if you're not familiar with it. Uh, it's basically just a ton of math, and this kind of gives you access to that math, and we'll we'll see that in the few, in a bit. But it also hides it if you don't want it, uh, so so you don't really need to know how it works to be able to use it. Uh, so I'll post a link to this site here. This is sort of getting started. It's twenty five dollars right now. Um, but it's a pay what you want model, so they recommend sixty dollars. But you can pay more if it's something that you're you're really getting some value out of, or if it's something that you just kind of want to try. You can pay less. It's it's up to you. But I'll post this link and then we can get started. But that's all we needed. I'm just gonna move that away. It's not on the asset store right now, so if you want to buy it off the Unity asset store, you're not gonna find it. So that's that. Let's start with a blank scene. So there's nothing here. I've just imported the the asset, and so it, we get this fun ray marcher thing. Uh, so if I go to game object and do a ray marcher, I can add all these things. Like I can add lights, a ray marcher, an object, a modifier, and a blend. Uh, what we want to do is let's just start with an object. When we do that, we get a sphere, and we get a ray marcher that gets added as well. So that ray marcher is what is actually handling all the math behind it. And then the sphere is just a definition of an object. The way ray marching works is it shoots a bunch of rays out and each of those rays tries to find intersections with these things. So these are effectively distance formulas. And so if we actually look at this, all the, the source for this is editable, so we can actually change these definitions or create our own definitions if you have some object that isn't defined here. If you know the distance formula for it, you can define it. Uh, and so you've got modifiable uh, input values, so we can change the radius, for example. And then the distance formula is just the length minus the radius. Uh, and so that's how all of these are going to look. It's a distance of where your ray is to how far away it is from the object. And if you know that, you, you know how far you can trace your ray before you have to guess again. Um, so it, that uh, I don't really want to get into how ray tracing works. I kind of want to separate that into, an, into its own video because there's a lot there. Uh, but that's sort of a general overview and you do have access to that stuff here. So here's our sphere and just for Simplicity, I'm going to add another sphere and we'll put that in the same spot. See, they kind of overlap. And from here, they actually look fairly similar. Uh, Unity's has different lighting because it's being lit by the skybox and all of that fun stuff. And the ray traced one looks different. Um, it might also look on my screen, uh, I have a high resolution monitor, so it might not come through in video, but it's actually a little bit splotchy uh, and that is because our ray marcher is actually not rendering at full resolution it's actually only doing a uh, 0.7 or 70 percent of the resolution so it's taking my screen and then shrinking that by 70 percent and doing that uh, and that saves it some performance because ray tra ray marching can be performance intensive intensive uh, so this kind of helps there you can change that though if we want it at max we can increase that and it just works or we can decrease that uh, so whatever but let's do 0.7 and if I zoom in now you can start to see where it changes like if I zoom really close to the sphere this is the ray marched one there's no there's no lines like when you're normally using a, a polygonal mesh you're gonna eventually get triangles like here you can start to see there's straight lines here not so with ray marching it's different <laughs> and so that's sort of one of the advantages is this gives you a way to get perfect shapes now uh, because you're shooting it's going to be as perfect as your distance formula 
So uh, since we're calculating an actual sphere here, this is going to get us an actual sphere because there is no, there's no vertices, there's no triangles, there's none of that. It's just a definition of what the object is. Uh, and we can do a lot more cool things with this. So let's create another sphere because why not? And now we have just these two spheres here and they kind of blur, uh, blend together, but not nicely. And just for fun, we'll put two other spheres here. Now that's boring. <laughs> There's nothing cool here for fun. Let's make this just a cube just so we kind of get an idea of different shapes. Uh, where's the cubes box? It's not called a cube. <laughs> there we go. So they're effectively the same thing. They're a little bit off, but that's fine. Uh, so what I want to be able to do is actually blend these two together with ray marching. You can actually do that because you just have distance formulas. So if you have some way where you can interpolate between those two distance formulas, you can actually blend the entire shape together. So instead of these rough edges where it meets and kind of goes directly into the other shape, we can kind of smooth around those. Uh, and so to give you an example of what that might look like, let's create this game object here. And I'm going to make it a parent of both the sphere and the box. And then if I add a game uh, uh, or a component, a blend component, you can kind of see with the smoothing, they all blend together. Uh, so that's still our sphere and our cube, but now they're being blended together. They're being smoothed. And so there's a bunch of different blending formulas. We can subtract them, for example. So this will subtract one from the other, which means now we have just this hole in our square. Uh, and then the other one is stairs, which just kind of gives you this, which uh, is like a tiered step. Pillows does similar stuff, but it kind of balloons out during the interpolation. Morph, I'm not sure. I haven't really done much with it. And intersection is going to be intersecting. So this is going to be where our square and our sphere meet. So as I move this in, more of the sphere should reveal itself and then should fade out the other side. So you can kind of do some cool effects that way. Uh, if you're familiar with like some of the mesh modification things, uh, I forget what, I forget the name of it, but if you're familiar with modifying meshes, it's similar to that, but this is done with math at real at runtime. So you're, it's a non-destructive way to actually work with this stuff. So all of this can be done and actually just runs in real time in your game. This is something that you can put in your game and just use and it just works. <laughs> I don't know if there's a better way to say it, but that's like, that's it. Um, there's not much else that you really need to do. Uh, the, those are sort of the two big ones too. There are some other fun things. So let's go back to our smoothing just because that just looks nicer. And so we, we've got it smooth. We can also add a modifier. So modifier was one of those other things. And so this is actually going to displace it uh, with a specific frequency and intensity and a specific speed. So effectively it's running a sine wave over your entire mesh in 3D space. And so if I increase this frequency, we get this really cool thing. Like how would you even make this in in 3d uh, in love with like a mesh how would you do this uh granted you're going to see some uh some artifacts when you start messing with this kind of stuff and that's because the way ray or ray marching works is uh transparency is sort of derived by this ray marcher there is a maximum number of steps that your rays take effectively the way it works is your camera takes every pixel on your screen and shoots a ray out from it and the direction the camera is depending on how like the focal length and all of that other stuff it, it figures out where to send the ray and then shoots it off in that direction and then these distance formulas tell it how far to travel so it will take the uh minimum distance from everything travel that far along its path and if it hit anything then you or got close enough then you know you hit something the problem with that is you're never going to actually just miss something. You're never going to know that you didn't hit anything. 
Uh, if you have really complicated geometry like we did when we increased the frequency, you might get close enough to something that the number of steps taken is higher than the number of total steps you take when you're marching your rays. Uh, and so when that happens, it just thinks it's uh, transparent. There's nothing there when there actually is. And so you get this kind of stuff. You can increase the number of steps and you might see we get a few more dots, but it doesn't really help. Uh, and so that's sort of one of the, the downfalls of this whole thing is you can, you can run into those kind of issues. Uh, you can fix that by just getting rid of this and tweaking some other parameters, but I haven't really, I haven't gotten that deep into this yet. So we probably don't want this because this isn't going to work for us. <laughs> so let's tweak this frequency down a bit to just one. One should be fine. And then we can increase the intensity as well. It will cause the same uh, artifacts for the same reason. But we can get it to like negative 0.5. Why not? But then the cool thing is we can also, you know, animate this over time. So it's not animated now. But if I were to start playing this, we now have this animated shape that's doing all sorts of cool things. Uh, apparently swimming. But we can like slow this down if I slow the speed down. Now we've got this thing that's like undulating and stuff, which is something that I I don't think you could rig something to do that. It would be very difficult. Uh, but here I, I did it in, I don't know, we've been recording for 13 minutes. So in 13 minutes, we created a scene and added that effect. So if that's something you want, there you go. Um, that's pretty much it. There's a whole bunch of other things as well, but they're just ba built on the same thing. Uh, so some examples they have here are going to be more advanced. Uh, they have infinite fractals, for example, which is an, an, a pretty uh, typical example of like ray marching because it's something that you can do with ray marching. You can just create infinite geometry because it's not based on the number of objects or it's not based on the complexity of the scene necessarily it's based on the number of things you're checking and the number of pixels you're doing it for so if as long as you can uh define something simply and then just repeat it constantly which is what this is doing it's defining a section of this and then just repeating it over and over and over and over and over again that's what this repeat thing is for if we turn that off uh, that's not the right one. <laughs> anyway, we'll just ignore what I just did because that didn't work. Uh, but anyway, the point is, uh, once you define these distance formulas, they can be applied over and over again. And so repeating them, for example, with like a mod will cause them to repeat over a certain amount of time. And so you can get that and get a ton of objects without actually really increasing the complexity of your scene that much, which allows you to do this kind of stuff, which means we can actually like fly through this in real time and it just looks relatively normal. So I don't know, this is something that you wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do uh, with just a normal mesh, especially because this, this whole thing is animated. You can see the entire thing is kind of waving and doing all that other fun stuff. Uh, I am not familiar enough with ray marching to be able to do this, which is why I'm showing this example instead of actually implementing it. But I kind of want to give you guys an idea of what this tool can get you. You can see there's like some uh, artifacts or it's kind of blinking and kind of grainy. That's just ray marching. <laughs> it's hard to kind of show that, but it's hitting parts that are brighter or not bright or whatever. And kind of highlighting those but I don't know I you kind of get the idea it, it's pretty capable of what you want but you'll get some of these things <laughs> I don't know what causes the the black here I haven't been able to figure out what what's causing that but it's a thing <laughs> so I don't know if this is something that will fit every project it probably won't uh, a lot of things like complex animations like rigging don't work very well with this kind of stuff to my knowledge you could probably do it i'm not sure how well it would work complex geometry like people also is difficult 
but again, you could do it if you had enough time. It it might not come out as you had planned, but anyway, <laughs> I'll kind of leave this here, I guess. Uh, if there's something else you guys want to see with this tool, let me know. I kind of covered the, the basic stuff, which is you can create objects, you can create the distance formulas. Uh, all of those things that I showed you, like the blends, are again just formulas that you can create and modify. So if I want to create one, I can just go in here, go to this Ray Marcher and create a blend snippet. Done. Uh, so that's all you have to do to create a new one of these things to actually start modifying this. So if you're familiar with this, it should be pretty easy to work with. And if you're not, you can just go in and look at what people are already doing and modify it to your needs. Uh, so you can kind of tweak things a little bit, which is a nice way to learn because uh, you, you somebody's already done the work, but you can tweak little values here and there and kind of see what they do. And then once you figure that out, you can kind of learn a little bit more about why they were doing it that particular way or start asking those questions and follow it where it leads you. So, but that that's it for this video. So I'll keep it short. And if you guys have other questions about it, let me know and we'll, we'll get into those in another video. But that's it for this video. So until next time, see you internet.